Hello everyone, Kedor here. So if you've watched any of my vids, you know that I did actually kind of a lot of footage on General Grievous and the Nuke team. If you haven't watched any of my vids, hi, I'm Kedor and this is my cat. So yeah, I did a lot of vids covering uh, what to do with the Grievous Nuke team and I got asked like thousands of questions, maybe, yeah, probably thousands at this point. So I'm making this as kind of a closure video and I expect it to be kind of final. Uh, I will be covering kind of pretty much everything that I already said, compiling it in one watchable video and not like hours and hours of footage and tell you what I think you should do with the team. So let's get started because you know I tend to ramble kind of a lot. So here you have here um, the kind of mandatory stuff for your team at the top. You need to have a Grievous and you need it to be gear 13. You need to have BB-8 in the team. You need to have T3. Then you need a lead that will be IG-88 most of the time. Sometimes you can use HK. If you're against like, before I get to the meat and potatoes of the thing, if it works for you is great. But you have to understand that uh, shards are different. Uh, levels are different, uh, you will f be fighting different teams, etc, etc. I'm telling that because uh, HK is most of the time a subpar option as for a lead. People can make the team work with him, but most of the time IG-88 is straight better, even if it's a bit harder to mod. Okay, okay. So then, moving on, uh, you can see that I compiled on this line right there uh, a bit of a list of the replacements and subs you can see sometimes. I don't have them geared up myself, so I didn't try everything, but uh, watching footage closely and uh, watching what the team can do and can't do, I can tell you that any sub on this line will make the team worse than it actually is, and that your win rate will drop. Take for example B2. B2 will act exactly in the same way that IPD will do, preventing Malak to taunt with buff immunity. Buff immunity is only 80%, you already lost 20% viability on the team. Okay, okay. Kind of the same with every of them, I'm not going to take uh, the time to describe all of them. All I'm going to say is that they can work, you can make the team work with Magna Guard, you, uh, there is a Madland or the Druid server uh, making it work with the IG-86, uh, it can work, it can work, but the win rate will be a bit lower than all the teams that I'm going to list in this video. Jawa Engineer has a bit of a special spot because he could replace BB-8, but he is a worst replacement. You will need like absolutely top-notch mods. When he dies, he doesn't trigger Grievous Meteorite Monstrosity, so you're not going to have a team as viable as the usual nuke. Okay, okay, moving on. Moving on, the R2 team. You see kind of a lot of people using R2. I think it's not as good as the four that I'm going to talk about in this video. I don't have a video about the team with R2 because when I did the testing with R2, it didn't really work well. Then it would require a really high gear R2 with the Zetas. And even then, and you can check DB official channel uh, for that video, I think I will try to link it somewhere there if I can. Um, and it will be in the description anyway himself says that it doesn't work and that it, well, that works, but it's a subpar option compared to the other teams. Okay, you can make it work, you can climb with it, but it's not as good and it's not as consistent as the four teams that I'm going to describe today. So these four teams, and uh, well, actually you can see only three because they are, uh, they are different. I will go in order on the teams that I think are the best, but these four teams are there. There is only three on the screen right now, that's because the, um, the last one, uh, the IPD team, is very different if you have the Zeta on IPD or if you don't. Okay, this said and done, I'm going to, tell, to talk about these four teams and I'm going to rank them as for efficiency and as for what I think you should play if you want to have a successful nuke run. Okay, okay, let's get started. The first team I want to talk about is kind of the original, the L3 team with an HK lead. That is the first one that I kind of covered and used for the longest time. It works, it's a great team, but 
it lacks consistency compared to the others because uh, it's kind of mod dependent and that's the only team who kind of cares about the mods of the opposing team. But it's like you can just see, it, it, it's really good to play. So, for this team, you have the turn order on the top. You can see that you only need to have BB-8, then both HK and IG-88 can work. Don't forget that IG-88 needs 10% more critical chance on Greaves. I will put a link to a video right there. I made a ton of vids about this specific comp because I used it for a lot. Uh, most of my older vids are about this comp. They're pretty bad because I sucked at editing and I still do, but they're here. The One of the big pros of the team is that it doesn't require as much Zeta than the others. That is the only team that you can make work with a gear 11 T3 and 4, though you will need to mod him well, and it doesn't require the second Zeta. It only needs the first one, the um, combat upgrade analysis uh, something. Because uh, the point of the team is to tank, 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 up to the point where a Raven does his AoE. At this point, they all have 10 stack of ferocity. That's enough to one-shot them, as you've seen in the footage just before. That's why it's actually the most satisfying team ever, because you just take the very top of the, uh, top of the meta, tip of the spear, and you just pff, one AoE and nobody is left. You can see that I put the um, L3 Zeta kind of in... Um, in I'm going to say parenthesis because I don't know the actual English word for that. Uh, so I hope that's this one. It helps a lot against the top end team, but the team can work without it. So that's a team that can work with two datas and kill um, the meta every time. But where this team kind of falls short, it needs absolutely top notch modding. You need your mods to be amazing for this team. Even it's if, if it's a, <gasps> even if it's a bit easier to mod Grievous for this team, because you only need 62% cringe chance opposed to 72 for a IG-88 lead, because I think you should play this team with a HK lead. Um, you need heavy protection on your guys and you need a lot of tankiness on both BB-8, your lead and L3, but you can have too much tankiness. I know that's weird, but yeah, and it will require some tweaking uh, depending on the team you're fighting against. So that's why this team is a bit less consistent and will give you a bit worse results sometimes. Okay? Okay. Moving on. If it goes wrong, it goes terribly wrong. This is a team that if it goes wrong, the five are left aligned uh, in front of you. So you should not use that team for Grand Arena. You hear me? This is a team that you should not use for Grand Arena. Okay. And also, this team falls short and loses to, well, what I called weird comps are uh, like uh, Han Solo in the team, uh, Grandmaster Yoda in the team, that kind of stuff, because those tunes don't take ferocity, so you have less debuffs on the field, and you cannot kill Malak when you AoE, because there isn't enough debuff for Grievous to do enough damage. That's, you know, that kind of makes sense, but that's how it goes. Next team. Okay, so the next team is a team with a Zeta less IPD. So the, you can see that IPD will play just before Grievous, that takes taunt off of Malak, and that ensures that you go to kill Bastila every time. This team works just fine, and it's kind of the same principle as the classic IPD team, but since um, you don't use the Zeta, you have to have a different turn order, and you also have to have some really good mods. So let me explain. The thing is, the turn order will be a bit different. So you can see you will have BB-8, then you will have IG-88. Do not use HK for this team. Really, do not. That, that, that's really bad. Then T3, IPD, plays before Grievous, strip stones, and you go to kill Bastila. The thing is, um, IG-88 will do his AoE, and that will take Foresight away from Bastila and Raven. And when he does that, that means that you will have less debuffs on the field. So that means that Grievous will do less damage overall. You can see the footage that he can still do a lot of damage, but that requires your Grievous to be on 
point that requires the perfect Grievous to do enough damage every time and that requires a ton of potency on IG-88. So it's the hardest team to mod. It works. So if you have great mods and you don't want to slap the Zeta on IPD, go for this team, it works just fine. So, pros and cons. Pros, less Zeta is needed because you don't need the Zeta on IPD, so you only need three. Going forward, all those teams require a good T3M4, that means gear 12, the stun gun, the second Zeta. We'll come back on that later. So less Zeta is needed, only three. That team beats high tenacity Malax that are an issue for, well, the number one team, spoiler alert, but yeah, high tenacity Malak can be a problem against the nuke. So yeah, this team will work because you actually don't need to land target lock on Malak. So you just trip him off taunt, he doesn't get it back because uh, the whoop whoop is not a hit, and you kill Bastila, and then you're fine. So that team wins in seven clicks. Here you go, pretty harder to do, easier than that. But then, for cons, you need really top-notch mods. You really, really, really need your mods to be on point. And if it goes wrong, it goes terribly wrong. Because like, if you don't kill Bastila, you can still pull out wins. But if you don't win that game, uh, there is a chance you don't kill anyone. And most of the time, you will like kill Bastila, maybe Marauder if he's present and if you get lucky, and that's it. So yeah, when you use that team, you need to be prepared to lose. That's also why I think this should not be used in Grand Arena, because it has some RNG expect to it. This should be used as a climbing tool. It will be great for this, the win rate will be really enough as long as you have the right mods, but you should not try to use that team in Grand Arena without the Zeta on IPD. Knowing that, moving forward to the next team, I think, in order of what you should do for the nuke and what you should play with. And that's the B1 team. So that might surprise you because people that know me know that I say that this team is actually the best. And I still stand by that. I think this team right there with the B1 is the best nuke team. And I strongly believe that Don Wright, that is the team that gives you the best win rate. And uh, for me, that's how it happens. That team is absolutely amazing because it handles every single situation just right. It can do everything and it can kill any team. It's really a great team, it does some great stuff, and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to do right. It's really hard to master. That's actually the problem with the team. And that's why I think, though it's, if, uh, pfft, though it's the best one, win rate wise, I don't think that's the one most people should go for, because it's kind of hard to get right and it has some higher requirements. It's highly versatile. You can see that the turn order is kind of the usual, except like you have B1 play second and then the rest is okay. It's highly versatile. It can beat any comp. It can beat um, the comps with Geo Alpha. It can beat. It can beat everything. It's great team just because, as stated in that vid, that vid. Fuck, I always get it wrong. Uh, the AI is a pile of dog shit and goes for B1. So B1 is actually your best tank possible for the nuke. It, it, it's amazing. That's the only uh, duo of characters that can like beat Malak every time if you get them right. It, so yeah, it handles every single situation and it's the, well, that's highly subjective, but I think that's the funniest to play because, uh, yeah, you can, you can do anything and it just blows everything up and it just does tons of stuff. And if you enjoy uh, having to adapt and playing strategy, it's the funniest to play. If you don't like to adapt and if you want like a uh, give or take um, easy team on a silver platter, don't use that team. That team is hard. That team is hard to get right and that team is hard to master. And it also has some higher requirements. Because for it to be really successful, I kind of think you need a gear 13 B1. That might be a stretch. I mean, I made it work with gear 11, but eh, it's a so much better with gear 13. And it requires great modding, especially on Grievous. You need perfect mods on Grievous, on 88, and on B1. But once you have that, it's 
it's amazing and it even holds on defense pretty well um, I mean it most people have some issues with it. Uh, the guy I train against most of the time, Schmutz, when he attacks it, uh, most of the time he just has Malak left. For Grand Arena, that's actually pretty good. So if you can master that team, uh, if you can master that team, well, forget what I just said, don't put it on defense. But if you get that team right, use it in Grand Arena. It's really good. Sometimes, with very uh, heavy RNG, Malak will be left alive alone. That's not that big of a deal. And most of the time, if you know what you're doing, well, you one-shot them, and it's actually the team that can have the most banners on it. Because you can get wins when you have four droids alive. Because B1 is so tough to kill. So, well, that won't happen every time. Most of the time you will have three, but you can have four droids alive with that team. That's really good banners for Grand Arena. So you should use that team if you get it right. If you can make it work, and if you have good read rate with it. Okay? Okay. Next team, so you guessed it by now, the team that I think is actually the best to use and the one you should go for. And that's... The classic Zeta IPD team. So I didn't make any whole video about it because there is kind of a lot. Uh, because yeah, that's, that's what works for most people. So, uh, there is kind of tons of footage around. I mean, yeah, you can check a lot of stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, you can see some of my own here. The team worked just fine. It's probably the easiest climb. It's probably the easiest to get right. And that's why what yeah, I think you should go for it. And I forgot one screen there that I will add in um, post-pro. That's okay. Uh, so, yeah, you should use that, um, you should use that uh, um, Zeta IPD, sorry, that kind of threw me off right there. I will add it in the um, editing. So yeah, Zeta IPD, you, you should use it because it's the easier to work with and it's the easier to get right. It's easy to do and it's easy to play. So it's actually the best option for most people let's put it that way and i'm not throwing any shade at anyone because i myself slapped the zeta on ipd and i'm using that team because it allows me to mod uh, the team a bit lighter and to keep good mods for other teams for pvp purposes so it's really easy to get right it doesn't need perfect mods or grievous actually you can make this team work uh, with um, a crit chance triangle most of the time, which is like very subpar modding for Grievous, but it will be good enough against uh, anything that isn't like a team instinct team or stuff like that. So yeah, it doesn't require perfect modding as the other on Grievous. And it's a 7 click wing too, so it just works perfectly fine. Uh, it's not as versatile as B1, so it might lose to like uh, GU Alpha teams and stuff like that, and it's hard countered, and I mean it, by high tenacity Malax, because you need target lock to land for that team to work. So if you see a high tenacity Malak, you will have to play the team differently, or what I do is go to B1, or change the turn order, but if you want to use that in Grand Arena, and you should, that's amazing for Grand Arena, you won't be able to change your mods, so that's not a thing. But the possibilities for that, I, um, if you can reach Malak, that means there is no trooper, put Tenacity down on him with uh, BB-8. If you cannot do that, you're screwed. Yep. You have to change teams, you have to put B1 in there. So yeah, if you use that team in Grand Arena, always check the tenacity of Malak first. And if he has too high of a tenacity, there is a very high chance that you cannot beat the team with that one. That's like the big weakness of the team. That's kind of the only one. Uh, I put in cons also that you can see some bull uh, RNG losses happen. Yeah, that's a thing, because even not high tenacity Malak could resist target lock multiple times. That's a thing. That's a thing. Uh, there is there is a chance that it happens, and if it does happen, uh, it feels horrible. And also, if there is a seed trooper and he resists target lock, you could also be in trouble. That's that's really heavy, like right there. 
but it could happen. So be one. It's a thing. But it's still, in my mind, the team that most people should do and should play because it's the easiest one to get right and the easiest on your own resources. Uh, even if you have to slide one more data, the mods uh, required are a lot lower. So now, going through all of these tunes, how should you mod them and what are the kind of specifics about them? Uh, so these ones are not like really, uh, you don't have to do tons of stuff about it. BB-8. Uh, give him gear 12 if you can, and I guess most people have a gear 12 BB-8 anyway. You can use him gear 10, just have him uh, a bit tanky still. Uh, yeah, you should have kind of a tanky BB-8. That, that's all there is to it. He has to go first, but it doesn't need, uh, he doesn't need really good mods or anything. I mean, like, his, mine is under 270 speed, and that's absolutely fine. B1. Uh, B1 can work at gear 11. Uh, against like low-end teams and even if good, good teams if the rest of your team is good enough but I do think that gear 12 and gear 13 is a lot better uh, when I played the team myself and I tried it uh, I tried it starting with a gear 11 uh, 6 stars B1 and it worked already and then I just geared him up and I could see the result get better and better and at gear 13 if you mod him for offense Mod him for offense, offense first, for that team. Uh, you can have a speed B1 for raids and stuff like that, that is pretty good. But for that team, go offense first, then give him some good speed. Uh, he hurts, he really does. I mean, it, I know that the numbers doesn't look that big, because like it's like, oh, that's only uh, 20, 20k damage AOE. But he does so much, so much additive damage, so much assist, so much, yeah, that in the long run, he has amazing DPS. And you should have the Zeta on B1. Uh, you, you cannot do without the Zeta on B1. Have the Zeta. If you don't have it, he's not your tank anymore. Uh, for L3, so if you want to use that team, feel free to do so. That's still a very good team. But uh, that one that does require L3 that you might want to use somewhere else. And that is better under HK lead. So, you know, mm, and it's still pretty iffy sometimes for most people. I like that team. I make it work a lot too. Um... But there is a good chance that it doesn't work for you because of your mods and because of their mods, you know. So, uh, if you want to play that team, I do advise the Zeta on if L3 even if it's not needed. Uh, one of the really big strengths of the team is that you only need two Zetas. With her Zeta, that's, uh, that's uh, three. So, yeah. It's, it's still better uh, versus like the um, higher teams uh, because it kind of makes sure that your droids die one by one then you just want her to be full tank, full tank mode for protection before uh, HP, and she doesn't need any speed. I don't know why the, sc why the screen is cut there, that's speed, uh, but yeah, she doesn't need any speed. I see speeds on L3 and people asking me, uh, what speed do I need on L3, and I'm like, <laughs> read the kit! Anyway, yeah, read the kit. Guys, please, before asking me questions, read the kits! Please, my job is not to read you the kits of the droids. Or any tune for that matter. So IPD. IPD is really easy. IPD you can make work. I don't remember at how much uh, stars you unlock it. Four or five. I don't care. Um, gear 8 is fine. And whatever the star count. You just want her at the... Her? Uh, it. You just want it at the right speed for the team you're using. Then, when you have the speed right, give it max potency. Like, the, the more you can give it, the better. So for the speed, um, if you want to play the Zeta IPD team, uh, you need to have IPD at 4 less speed than IG-88 or any higher than that. You want it to play second, so that means she has to play just before IG-88, but because of her passive, it, it's passive, fuck sakes, uh, it will play before it because it will gain 3% turn meter. So yeah, for something speed lower than MG88 is fine. You can go higher than that. That's just fine. If you want to play the Zeta less team, it's a bit harder to get right because you want to squeeze it just behind T3 and Grievous. Uh, but if you put like the speeds in order, that won't work because of that passive. So for, for um, it to play at the right time, it needs to have less than 90% of T3 M4 speed, but more than 90% of Grievous speed. That's kind of in the middle right there. But like, 
Uh, I have a 209 speed Grievous and a 214 speed T3 M4. Having IPD at 190 speed is fine. It goes right in the middle. You you tweak a bit if it plays too early, too late, but yeah, just squeeze it right there. Okay, going forward. So that that's like the easiest one. Uh, I'm just going by Toon's importance in modding. And uh, yeah, some are pretty specific. T3 M4, you can make it work at gear 11 only with the L3 comp because you don't need the second Zeta. Every other team needs the second Zeta to work properly against good Balak teams. So you need um, gear 12 and uh, gear 12 plus 1, that plus 1 being the stun gun. I'm going to start with the bottom. The second Zeta does jack shit without the Mark 12 stun gun because the Zeta is based on physical penetration that sounds weird and sexual but yeah all of his penetration <laughs> I hate saying that is on the stun gun 80% of it if you don't have it you have 20% of the Zeta and that doesn't do enough damage okay I can't stress this enough okay Gear 12, stun gun, maybe uh, the HP stuff to making more tanky because you have to aim for a very tanky T3. If it dies, you're screwed. Except in the B1 team, maybe. Uh, but yeah, go for 110k HP plus protection. You want four protection primaries, then you want to give him a bit of potency, maybe a bit of crit chance, and that's it. Okay? If you're having gear 13, I don't advise it. I think that's, uh, that's too much. Like, Sure, I mean, if you can slap uh, any number of gear 13 on your tunes, go ahead, slap it too, that, that's fine. That will actually help you a great deal, because you will have more freedom for your mods. But people like me, I only have like 5 gear 13, uh, T3 no, not on my list. Not on my list anytime soon, because it just worked that way. So don't think that you need a gear 13 T3 for that team to work. It makes sense, but it's definitely not needed. Okay? Okay. But yeah, seriously, make your T3 tanky. I see so much people having like paper thin T3s and oh, I can't win. Yeah, yeah, well, gets where that comes from. IG88, I said, I, I think that's the one I get the most. Like people still coming at me with like 50% uh, crit chance and saying, oh, I can make the team work. <laughs> IG88 needs to be gear 12 and to have the a uh, uh, multi tool. Again, it doesn't like very needs to if you have really good mods, but it just helps immensely. And gear 12 helps immensely for modding too. You need to have 80% crit chance on your IG88. That's not hard to do. That's a gear 12 and that's a triangle and a set maybe. And that's it, you're there. You need 80% crit chance on IG88. If you don't have this, I will not even answer you if you ask me why your team doesn't work. Okay? Good. Now that's said and done. And then you want as much potency as you want, uh, as you can. 100% uh, is good. Mine is there. Uh, and, um, that's enough. Like 90 can be enough. But you know, the higher the tenacity of the Malak team, the more potency you need. So the more the better. That's kind of it. So you just have to use uh, six stars um, crit chance triangle, six star potency cross, and then potency and critical chance set, and you're good to go. And that's it. That's really not hard to do, guys. Please, I don't want to see any crap IG88 by people asking me why their team doesn't work. Please! Okay? Okay. So, next on the list, of course, the meat and potatoes of the team, the Greaves. The Grievous. The Grievous. I see so much stuff for Grievous. But here you go. Gear 13 Grievous is mandatory. Of course. I mean, that's like. Yeah. That's just Gear 13. Okay. You want 72% crit chance. It has a little, like, uh, beep boop if you read down there. If you are playing the R2 team, well, first you shouldn't. But you have a bonus for crit chance, so it's okay if you have 62%. Just remind yourself that if R2 is dead, that doesn't apply, so you might get non-crit hits. And that's normal, and that's your fault because you're playing R2 comp. Okay. And then if your leader is HK47, you only need 62%. 
that's why HK is probably better at lower levels and uh, on the um, L3 comp it's a bit easier. But for everything else you need 72% crit chance. If you have lower than that of a crit chance, that's not a death sentence. That just means that you will have sometimes RNG involved. Like, let's say you are like when I started doing nuke vids at 67%, that is 5% of the time you will not get a crit, you won't kill Bastila, and you're dead. But you can play the team without being there. Okay? Okay. Then the speed. The speed, same thing. I say 206, sometimes I even say 210. You should have as high speed as you can. If you have less than that, that's okay. That's okay. That speed requirement is only there for um, the speed of the opposing team. If the opposing team plays before your Grievous, your Grievous is too slow. But if you never fight um, Ravens above 300 and I don't know 30 speed, 202 is enough. See, 206 is for 340 Raven teams and higher and stuff like that. But yeah, if Grievous plays after them, he's too slow. Or, quick one right there and think about it, uh, since they gain speed from debuff, if you have IG-88 T3 and Grievous be too far apart speed-wise, um, uh, Sith Empire can kind of outrun Grievous, so you need to have them kind of in a bunch. But yeah, 206 is a really good benchmark, aim for it. If you don't get there but you still win, that's fine, good for you, but you should get there. And 100k HP, so again, that's a benchmark you should aim for, but that's not a death sentence if you don't get there. I myself don't get there. And it still works, it's just like perfect conditions. If you have these uh, three benchmarks uh, checked, you have a perfect Grievous. Okay? Okay. So you should use for that, of course, every time an HP cycling cross, the arrow. I kind of say this and I will show you my own mod. You can use, of course, a uh, health arrow, but you can use a speed one. Uh, and what that does, uh, and then you go for HP and your crit stand set. What that does, going for a speed arrow, if you have mods kind of that way, it can allow you to use non-speed mods, uh, sp uh, mods without any speed, but good health and crit chance. And that can make you get to every benchmark. I couldn't get all the benchmarks right myself before trying a speed arrow, because I uh, happen to have a really good speed arrow. I will show you my mods for Grievous just after that. The last point I want to emphasize is that Grievous, to be really the best he can, needs the crit damage triangle. Okay? Uh, if you have your Grievous at, uh, let's say, 91k HP with a crit damage set, that's better than a Grievous with 100k HP without the crit damage set. You will do more damage, okay? And that will be, most of the time, the tipping point to kill those biggest and baddest teams. And that's going to be even more through when they add relics to the game. Okay? Okay. Go for the crit damage triangle. The Zeta IPD team can work without it uh, because uh, it gives more debuffs all around, but if you like go for it with a crit chance triangle and you don't kill Bastille outright, you know where it comes from. Where, where it comes from, sorry. Wow, where the hell? Okay, so let me show you my mods for my Grievous. So really my own mod for Grievous. Pretty straightforward, you can see the sets right there. So this is my arrow, and it's actually really great because it has like a, a set worth of uh, crit chance, so that's pretty good for me. That allows me to have this triangle that doesn't have any crit chance, but has good health, so it, it helps me get there. Then of course HP cross, with some crit chance and some speed. You can see that my secondary speeds are like 10 and stuff like that, so that's kind of easy to get, also good crit chance. Then um, the diamond has really good HP, 
uh, and some crit chance against 10 speed and the square doesn't have any speed because speed arrow and also has HP and crit chance. So uh, percent HP can, cannot be on percent HP primaries for secondaries. So yeah, uh, I mean, you can see that I don't have the 100k benchmark, but that's still pretty good. The speed is just fine for me. Uh, and then, of course, I have the 72%, so no RNG involved. I hope that you get the team right now. As advised at the start, I won't answer any question that I answer on the vid, or the vids that I linked there. Here you go, you should have everything you need. Again, big thanks to all of you for the support, special thanks to my Patreon and donator. Guys, you're amazing, what can I say? I wish you guys later.